everyone loved Stan Stanislas. And why not? He was the handsome guy with a warm smile, a heart of gold, and a deeply devoted son. I could say we are very proud. Stan was our joy, was our firstborn. Every time he came home, he, uh, it was fun, and he made everybody happy, and hugging, and pick me up, and he became a very strong kid. He was also a very proud big brother. He would guide me in a lot of things I would do. And just a good friend that would come. He would always bring the family together and talk. And... He was my best friend. Stan was a world-class boxer, and he did all his fighting in the ring. He was a great guy. He was a great human being. There was never a time in the years that I've known him since 2008 that, that uh, he was disrespectful. He was warm, he was kind, he was courteous, he was helpful. Uh, there wasn't one person in my gym who didn't like him. But apparently, there was someone who wanted to take the champ down. This surprising young boxer's big shot tragically came from a Colt 45 handgun in the middle of the night. I said, what happened? Tell me. Oh, he shot Stan. I said, what do you mean? That was the last word I heard. He shot my son. But who would shoot a man without an enemy in the world? Stan Stennis' class was always considered a very smart kid. And when Stan put his mind to something, he excelled. Just like he did when he took up boxing at the tender age of 16. I started wrestling. And through wrestling, I realized I like individual competition. If I win, I win. If I lose, I lose. There's nobody to blame. Stan was so committed to his new sport, he'd walk three miles to the gym to train. Stan fell in love with boxing, and they said, man, wait, wait, this kid's going to be good. Stan was better than good, a whole lot better. Well, I quit sparring him in 2010. He'd been about a year and a half. And uh, we boxed real hard one day, and I got the best of him. I came back, we boxed the three or four days later, and he gave me a bloody nose. And that was the end of that, never boxed him again. I was missing him and he was hitting me. So that was it for that. And before long, Stan was a Golden Gloves champ competing around the globe. He was a world-class, he was down boxing with a couple of world-class professional boxers. And he started right here in my gym. He was at that level, top 10, top 20 uh, professional fighters in the world. And he was in the ring with him, going toe to toe, and he started right here. That's how good he was. The guy with the heart of gold had big ambitions, and he had the talent to back them up. I'm training for this Olympics. I'm hoping that I can get bring a gold home. His parents were impressed, not only about his boxing skills, but they were in awe of the young man they had raised. I am very proud of him. He did a lot for his age. This rising star only reached the age of 23. The pain is raw, fresh for his family, particularly deep because of the way Stan was taken from them. Early Thanksgiving morning, murdered with a single gunshot to the head. What did Stan do to him in order for Stan to deserve to die? What did Stan do to deserve one gunshot? Not two, not three, one on his head. So he had no chance to go to the hospital. Stan Stanislas, a world-class boxer and an even better guy, has been savagely gunned down. Shot once in the head at point-blank range with a Colt 45 handgun. Stan's friends and family stunned. His mother, heartbroken. What did Stan do to him in order for Stan to deserve to die? When cops corner the killer, they're shocked. He's a friend of Stan's, a former sparring partner, Daryl Tellisme. Surprisingly, the boxer surrendered without a fight. He gave himself up willingly so that uh, nobody else was injured. Um, I'm thankful for that. 
cops say Telus, me, and Stan spent the night out on the town together. Daryl actually picked him up. Sometime that night, things got heated. Telus, me, challenged Stan to a fight, and fist flew. According to the witnesses, the suspect had been egging on the victim to fight him, either in the ring or in any other way. And the uh, victim was reluctant to do that. The victim did not want to fight him in the ring or otherwise. And um, eventually, uh, from what I understand, the suspect pushed the victim too far, and eventually they had a physical altercation down in West Palm Beach. Stan was a much better fighter and ended things fast. But the fuse had been lit, and tell us me was a ticking human time bomb. Stan headed home. Stan said, this is it, we're done, it's finished. We, we put that rivalry to bed. When everyone went their separate ways and Stan was locked up tight inside his Palm Beach Shores home, he thought all the drama was over, squashed. But little did he know, it wasn't. Because a few hours later, around 4 a.m., Daryl came back, knocking on Stan's apartment door in the dark hours of Thanksgiving morning. It's my estimation and from what I've been told by witnesses that the uh, suspect uh, was still angry and went home and got a gun and came back and decided to finish things. I got the call from people that were on the scene. What did the person on the other end of the line say? Stan's dead. Stan's dead. He got shot in the head. Dave Luter introduced Stan and Daryl at his gym in West Palm. I first met Daryl in probably 2010, and he was training at, at another local gym. Eventually, he came over, and uh, Stanley sparred him the first two rounds, and I had to stop the sparring. Stanley, I think he knocked him down four or five times. And the bitter rivalry was born. This rivalry was? It was in Daryl's head. There was no rivalry. I'm the only person in the world who thought he was better than Stanley was Daryl. You said that this was basically Daryl's situation. They didn't share an issue with one another. No. You know, Daryl kept stepping up to Stan as if, I mean, as if he were, you know, a tough guy. You know, he was um, calling Stan out time and time again. Stan just wouldn't have anything to do with it. Daryl potentially saw Stan as someone that he needed to eliminate in order to have a shot at what it was that he was hoping for. Sports psychologist Dr. Sari Shepard never treated Daryl Tellesme, but says his actions indicate he was desperate to beat Stan any way he could, especially after Stan slapped him around earlier that night. Rivalry and competition are not new to sport, and there's nothing inherently negative about rivalry and competition in sport. As a matter of fact, it can spur competitors on to do their best and can raise the level of competition across the board. There was a lot of that adrenaline going on in the, in the barroom scene and in the fights that followed. And so perhaps what happened with Daryl was that he was overtaken in that moment and then when the moment subsided and he was able to calm down, he was faced with the significant regret. The so-called rivalry that went too far was finally over. And the man who seemed to always want to win will still likely end up losing. Cops say Daryl waited at his West Palm Beach home to be cuffed and carted away. And according to police reports, the gun and his clothes stained with Stan's blood were also still inside. And Daryl was saying all this as he was confessing to the crime. I will never understand how you go from, you know, somebody getting the best of you to making the decision that shooting him in the head is the best option. Like what makes that, what makes that a good idea? The family has no idea how to deal with their loss. The pain is still very fresh, but they wonder if they will ever find peace. I, I can't even put it into words. It's just, it just feels like you're suffocating all the time. I don't, that's all I can, that's how I can describe it. It was just, uh, I went on his Facebook page and I was reading all the comments, just paragraphs and paragraphs of everything, how he's touched people. Everybody was just like, no, I I read him a quite a way down and I didn't see any negative at all, nothing. He was just a good person to everybody. And they're the ones fighting now to keep Stan's memory alive. What will you do to honor his legacy and his memory as you move forward in your life? 
I guess work my hardest at everything I do and I guess now I'm just extra motivated to be good at whatever I decide to do. What do you want to say to Stan? I want to tell to Stan the body is gone or the dream is still alive. I want to say tell Stan you are still a champion and we'll never forget you. Mom, what would, would you say to him if you could? If I could, I would tell Stan, I will never forget you. My love, my first child, never forget you. You're not allowed to help me as much as you can. You always come to help me when I'm stuck on the road. Stan, if I keep saying how much I'm going to miss you, I can take the whole night and I can take another day just to say, Stan, how much I love you. Stan, I love you. Stan, I love you. Stan, I would never stop to love you.